An influential Philadelphia megachurch pastor has been sentenced up to 12 years in prison. Uh, and I agree with what the judge said during the sentencing. I think that the pastor thought that maybe he could have gotten some leniency, but that is not what the judge did and we'll talk exactly what this judge said to the pastor and the crimes against him in just a second. But before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You will find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work here and you guys would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, it would mean the world to me. As I've told most of you, I've, I've done videos on this and provided updates. My wife recently suffered a stroke uh, along with a vegetation on her heart valve. She has quite a bit of a recovery to go. We're very thankful to the Lord that she is now out of the hospital after spending in there for about a week. Uh, but medical bills are stacking up in a major way. In addition to that, she is going to be off work for at least six weeks as part of a home health recovery. Unfortunately, with that though, uh, she will not be receiving any paychecks. So we are going to be without her income here for at least the next month and a half. So uh, if you guys enjoy again you appreciate what i do and you would like to help us out by making a donation to keep us going you can hit that super thanks button on the yt video or you can become a monthly contributor by joining my patreon for as little as five bucks a month patreon.com slash not by site news that link is in the description again i gotta say a big thank you to everybody who is already contributing and those thinking of doing so thank you as well your generosity is greatly appreciated Let's get into this. Pastor Mark Hatcher Sr. of, yeah, I mean, popular mega church out there in, in Philadelphia, Holy Ghost Headquarters Revival Center, has now been sentenced up to 12 years in prison after his inappropriate behavior involving little ones. Now, let me say this, because there were multiple charges here against the pastor. And, well, multiple victims here, but two of them, when I took a look at this, when I saw that two of them were his own family members. I mean, it's, it's already bad enough when you have inappropriate behavior involving a little one, but when it is against members of your own family, that's especially sick. One of them, one of them was only six years old at the time that it occurred, a six-year-old boy, where this occurred back in 2000, between 2007 and 2008. Also, another one of his family members, a 15-year-old female who he had inappropriate behavior with going back to the year 2000. And then there was yet another victim, a 13-year-old female who Mark Hatcher Sr. had inappropriate behavior with in an abandoned house that apparently was linked to the church. And the victim had shared her story about what she occurred, what had occurred to her at the hands of this pastor. Now, Pastor Mark Hatcher has maintained his innocence. In fact, he even still continued to do so during his sentencing, saying, in fact, that you know, he did not do these things that he is being accused of. However, he is praying for healing here for all of the victims involved. Now, let me get to the judge because the judge had something interesting to say. Mark Hatcher was, you know, leaning on hope here that his charitable deeds and all of the other goodwill that he had done in the past was somehow going to influence the judge into you know, maybe a lighter sentence, something like that. But that's not what happened here. Now, the judge had acknowledged that maybe Mark Hatcher Sr. had done some good deeds in the past. However, the bad that he has done, the crimes that he has committed has now far outweighed any good or positivity that he has done in his community or within his church. 
And then he called him exactly what he is, a serial pred, and sentenced him five to 12 years in prison for these crimes. I hope it's the full sentence. I really do. I hope it's the full 12 years. Because when you do what you do to little ones, you know, there should be, you know, extra weight that comes with that as far as, you know, responsibility, accountability. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't even think 12 years is enough for this. I don't. And I've said before that when this happens to the little ones, you should give these suckers life in prison. That's my take on it. Because it's happening far too often. But where it's really happening more now than ever before is within the church. You know, I get so sick and tired of people that defend the churches and defend the pastors who would do these sorts of things to little ones because they would rather bury their head in the sand and pretend that it's not happening. They think that they can trust somebody based off of a title because somebody puts the name of pastor in their name. That somehow makes them, you know, untouchable. You can't question them. The, the thought of them ever committing a crime has to go completely out the window because, again, they're a pastor. And who are you to question their authority? I mean, for crying out loud, doesn't the Bible say, touch not my anointed? Oh, but you see, the Bible also talks about how there will be false Christ, false prophets, teachers, all of that will come in the last days and deceive many. Let me ask this question. For those that like to hide behind the scripture of touch not my not, touch not my anointed, isn't there not another scripture that talks about how you will know people by their fruits and not their titles? You see, they don't like to go into those scriptures because what it does is it will take away their point. Now, am I saying that some pastors are are, are not anointed? Not say, some are very much anointed and actually want to do good. No, not all pastors are bad. But at the same time, you have to use a level of discernment from the Holy Spirit to be able to decipher which ones are wolves and which ones are not. And when you see pastor after pastor being arrested, being removed from positions within the church, you notice a pattern here. It's not just isolated cases in various states. It's happening on a daily basis. And still, people choose to bury their head in the sand, give a pass to the pastor, victim shame, anybody that would dare accuse them of such heinous acts. To me, that makes those people just as bad when they do those sorts of things. But if you guys want to read up more about this, you can go check out the full scope over at the Roy's Report for more on that. And I do want to hear from you and get your thoughts on this in the comment section. What do you think about Pastor Mark Hatcher Sr., his 5 to 12 year prison sentence? Do you think that it doesn't, is that it's not enough? Should it go further? Do you agree with me that it should be a life sentence? And hey, maybe... Also, you are somebody that has attended Holy Ghost headquarters in the past, or maybe you still attend right now. What do you think here about Hatcher's sentencing? Don't forget as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work here, and you are able to contribute with a donation to help me out, and again, my, my family and my wife in this time after uh, she suffered a stroke, your donations are greatly appreciated in this time as our Medical bills are, are, are stacking up, and uh, let me just tell you guys, the, uh, the numbers are, have now exceeded six figures. So again, you can hit that super thanks button on the YT video, or you can become a monthly contributor by joining the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. 
as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.